quarter of the day. Uh, private members business item number two for the day. Private members business item 517 outside the order of precedence standing in the name of Mr Buttigieg relating to the introduction of the building amendment mechanical services and medical gas work bill. Mr yep. President, I move that leave be given to bring in a bill for an act to amend the Home Building Act 1989 to provide for the licensing of contractors and the certifying of supervisors and tradespersons who carry out mechanical services work, including medical gas systems work and for related purposes. Uh, is leave granted? Yep. Leave granted. Mr President, I present the bill and move that the bill be read a first time and printed. Thank you. Uh, all those in favour? No. You'll speak to. Yep, the question is that of the member. All those opinions say aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Mr. Uh, President. Building amendment, mechanical <laughs> building amendment, mechanical services and gas work bill 2020, first read. Mr. President, I move that this bill now be read a second time. All those. Uh, sorry, you'll speak to the. Yes. Yep. The Honourable Mark Buttigieg. Thank you, Mr. President. I am pleased to present the bill, Building Amendment Mechanical Services and Medical Gas Work 2020. It is a bill to amend the Home Building Act 1989. The object of the bill is to provide for the licensing of contractors and the certifying of supervisors and tradespersons who carry out mechanical services work, including medical gas systems work. The legislation is designed to prevent a repeat of the tragic events that took place at Bankstown Lidcombe Hospital in 2016, when two newborn babies <clears throat> were catastrophically administered poisonous gas instead of oxygen. A cross-connection of medical gas delivery outlets was the cause of these events. The legislation has been developed to ensure that mechanical services and medical gas work is licensed. Mr President, this is a highly specialised form of plumbing work, which has a great deal of complexity and requires extensive technical training to be performed safely. The bill would make certain that safety measures are legislated in an effort to protect the public. It will also ensure that hospitals and health facilities have skilled and qualified individuals carrying out vital services. In June 2016, Benish and Danielle Khan, Amelia Khan's parents, were very excited and anticipating the birth of their child. Amelia was tragically given nitrous oxide instead of oxygen shortly after she was born. They were completely devastated to find out that their baby girl was given poisonous gas, which left her with irreversible brain damage. Amelia is now also vision impaired. She will never be able to walk independently and will unlikely be able to use her hands. Amelia is likely to have lifelong quadriplegic cerebral palsy and intellectual disabilities. She is also unlikely to, to develop speech and will be dependent on others for all aspects of her care. Amelia's amazing and incredible parents, Benish and Daniel Khan, are here with us today and I'm incredibly thankful for them being here. Yeah. Yeah. Tragically, in July 2016, one month after Amelia was administered nitrous oxide, Sonia Ghanem awakened after a caesarean section and was told her baby John had died. Devastatingly, John had also been given nitrous oxide instead of oxygen. In May this year, four years after the tragedies, Mr President, the gas installer Christopher Turner pleaded guilty to failing in his duty under the Work Health and Safety Act and was given a $100,000 fine. In September 2019, Safe Work New South Wales announced that charges against the health district had been dropped. Safe Work said that the local health district had entered into an enforceable undertaking and stated that the strategies from the enforcement were likely to deliver long-term sustainable safety improvements. However, the undertaking for the health district is grossly inadequate 
and fails to address the core issue, which is leaving people across New South Wales at extreme risk. Currently, there is no requirement in New South Wales to have a qualification or training to work with medical gas in both installation and maintenance. It is absolutely horrifying that any person without the proper training, skills, education and experience can legally perform this work, which can be highly dangerous and have extremely dire consequences. Every day that goes by in New South Wales without any regulation, the Berejiklian government is allowing untrained people to install medical gas systems in our hospitals and health facilities and risking people's lives across the state. The trauma and pain that the Khan and Ganem families are suffering is inconceivable. We must prevent these tragic events happening to another person's family or loved ones again in our state. Licensing, Mr President, is the most effective method in mitigating risks to public safety. The Victorian and Queensland governments have seen the fundamental importance of establishing a licensing regime to protect their residents. Both Victoria and Queensland have legislation in place that requires individuals to have a mechanical services and mecha a medical gas licence, which makes certain that high-risk work is carried out by individuals who are appropriately qualified. In fact, in a direct response to the tragic events that took place at Bankstown Lidcombe Hospital, the Queensland Government passed legislation to ensure that individuals responsible for the installation and maintenance of medical gas pipes are licensed. On the 5th of September 2018, when the Queensland Government successfully passed the new laws for mechanical services and mechanical gas licensing, the Honourable Mick de Brenny, the Queensland Minister for Housing and Public Works, said the following. In 2016, parents across Australia were horrified at the tragedy that occurred in a Sydney hospital when a baby died and another was left with brain damage due to a medical gas fitting that was connected incorrectly. We haven't seen that kind of mistake made in Queensland and I hope we never do. To make sure we don't, our new occupational licence requirement ensures these types of installations can only be performed by individuals who are suitably qualified to perform them. If Queensland parliamentarians are responding to the horrific tragedies that occurred in our own state and can see the seriousness of this urgent safety issue, then I ask, why can't the New South Wales government do the right thing by our own residents and communities? Especially when this happened in our state, Mr President. This should have been a priority for the Liberal and National Government when this occurred, and it needs to be now. Liberal and National Party members should note that your colleagues in Queensland did not oppose the legislation to licence mechanical services and mechanical gas. They saw the importance for their communities and residents, and I encourage you to do the same. There are serious concerns from industry experts that the horrific tragedies at Bankstown Lidcombe Hospital will be repeated if there is a failure to take action to address the absence of appropriate licensing in this state. The Victorian and Queensland governments listened to industry and experts and they legislated. In New South Wales, the Plumbing Trades Employees Union has been highlighting this public safety issue and has long been advocating for regulatory intervention along with the rest of industry. They are also particularly concerned as they know this is an area of increasing complexity and importance and it remains unregulated. Major hospitals and health facilities across New South Wales have had recent projects which involve mechanical services and, mecha and medical gas work. There has been a large amount of feedback regarding the lack of adequately trained and skilled people doing medical gas installations and maintenance on multiple projects. Subcontractors are commonly hired without any appropriate skills. Water plumbers without skills, training or education in the specific area are employed to do medical gas installations. 
which requires an individual with highly specialised skills and experience to safely carry out the work. When contractors are questioned about employing people to undertake the work without appropriate training or experience, certain contractors will say that there is no enforceable standard, so they are not concerned. There are other contractors who want safe installations to be carried out and cannot find the trained and skilled individuals in New South Wales that are able to conduct mechanical services and medical gas work. They are forced to hire Victorian residents as they know they have the sufficient qualifications and skills. Therefore, there is further support from industry to have access to qualified and skilled labour within New South Wales. The only solution to this safety issue, Mr President, is a licensing regime. Band-aids cannot be applied to this situation. Having further inspectors will not work when every day there are individuals permitted to work in mechanical services and medical gas that do not have any training, education, skills and experience in undertaking the high-risk work which can have devastating consequences. Management systems in health facilities cannot ensure that people are appropriately educated in installing medical gas pipe systems in our hospitals and it will not prevent tragedies. Non-enforceable policy directives do not achieve any semblance of protection. But you know what does work? Formal qualifications and licensing requirements for mechanical services and medical gas work. Currently in New South Wales, you need to have a licence to engage in the plumbing of water. It is therefore more than reasonable that you would require a licence to undertake highly specialised plumbing work, which can have life and death consequences. Labor believes mechanical services and medical gas plumbing requires licensing to ensure New South Wales residents are adequately protected. The bill delivers licensing for mechanical services plumbing work, which includes medical gas work. Mechanical services work is a specialised type of plumbing that includes the construction, installation, replacement, repair, alteration, maintenance, testing or commissioning of a mechanical heating, cooling or ventilation system in a building. Notably, it also includes medical gas, which is comprised of the construction, installation, replacement, repair, alteration, maintenance, testing or commissioning of any fixed component used in a reticulation system for the supply or removal of medical gases from the gas source to the wall outlet. Mechanical services has a great deal of complexity and requires extensive technical training to be performed safely. When done incorrectly, it can expose the community to deadly Legionella outbreaks as air conditioning systems in large buildings, hospitals and shopping centres can transmit the disease through water droplets sprayed from their exhausts and can consequently be inhaled by individuals. Serious illness and fatalities have been linked to cooling towers. In 2016, in Sydney CBD, there was tragically one death and there were 15 hospitalisations as a result of the contraction of Legionella. Poor installations have the capacity to produce serious health and safety problems or could possibly be fatal. The main risks associated with medical gas work includes the contamination of pipelines and the cross connections of gas delivery outlets which tragically occurred in our state. The bill amends the Home Building Act 1989 to provide for the licensing of mechanical services work, including medical gas systems work. <clears throat> and the new mechanical service licence would be administered by the Department of Fair Trading. This is consistent with other existing licensing requirements under the Home Building Act 1989. The Home Building Act 1989 also provides <clears throat> the licensing of electrical, plumbing and drainage and refrigeration work. Fair Trading also administers the licensing for that work as it would for the new licence under this bill. Mr President, this bill has not sought to reinvent the wheel as the amendments proposed by the bill 
follow the existing statutory drafting under the Act. Industry and stakeholders will be familiar with the new provisions. Unlike New South Wales, Queensland and Victoria have dedicated building authorities. The Queensland Building and Construction Commission and the Victorian Building Authority are able to administer important licences like mechanical services and mechanical gas. As our state urgently requires mechanical services and mechanical gas licensing, this bill seeks to operate within the existing legislative framework in New South Wales. Its functions in the equivalent way to other licences, which operate and are administered through the Home Building Act. The bill does incorporate the key concepts and requirements from Queensland and Victorian legislation that are widely known and accepted by industry professionals to be a world-class standard for mechanical services and mechanical gas. The bill amends the Home Building Act 1989, New South Wales, to include a new category of specialist work called mechanical services work that includes medical gas. The Home Building Act has a number of other specialised forms of work in the Act, such as electrical wiring work, as I mentioned previously. The new definition of mechanical services work to be included has been developed to align with industry expectations and follows the current successful regulatory regime's definition in other jurisdictions. The Bill proposes a new section, 15A, which prohibits an individual from doing any mechanical services work, which includes medical gas, without a licence. The maximum penalty for a failure to comply with this requirement is 1,000 penalty units, which is $110,000 for a corporation, and 200 penalty units in any other case, which equates to $22,000. This section of the bill is consistent with the drafting of the Home Building Act, as the equivalent statutory fine is currently in place for other specialist works when work is done without a licence. The new section 15A contains specific and targeted exceptions to the prohibition on carrying out mechanical services work, including mechanical gas work without a licence. Such exceptions, Mr President, apply to apprentices and trainees. The bill follows the electrical wiring work section of the Act where it robustly ensures that a qualified supervisor must be present for the work being carry, carried out, is available to consult, give directions and personally ensure the work is being done correctly by an apprentice or a trainee. The intention of these exceptions is to ensure apprentices and trainees can lawfully learn their trade while at the same time putting the onus firmly on their supervisors as it is extremely high risk work and they risk significant fines for failure to comply. Section 33E of the bill provides the minimum requirements to attain a licence to undertake mechanical services work. The requirements in 33E, subsection 1, is the successful completion of the applicable Certificate 3 in Plumbing Mechanical Services course, which includes the Medical Gas Competency Unit, as well as the successful completion of an apprenticeship of four years experience acceptable to the Secretary of the Department, but must include medical gas experience. The Certificate 3 in Plumbing Mechanical Services course and the unit of competency known as install medical gas pipeline systems are based on nationally recognised training from the National Register on Vocational Education and Training, also known as VET, in Australia. As this would be a new specialised course in New South Wales to be administered by education providers and to give ample time for this to be administered by the providers, this section of the Act would not come into effect for two years after the date of assent. It must be noted that specialised mechanical services and medical gas courses are the nationally recognised program around Australia. Additionally, 33E of the Bill, subsection 2, ensures that this new regime does not unfairly omit individuals from an entitlement to be licensed when they do have 
ha at least four years experience in mechanical services work in addition to completing the necessary updated unit of me medical gas competency within the preceding two years and has any other qualifications determined by the secretary as necessary to enable the applicant to do or supervise mechanical services work. This essentially allows suitably qualified, skilled and experienced individuals to have the ability to be licensed in the work without them having to complete the new certificate three and complete another apprenticeship or four years of work. Although it importantly requires those individuals to complete the unit of competency known as install medical gas pipeline systems. The nationally recognised course within the previous two years, which will ensure we have highly knowledgeable and skilled individuals working on high risk installations. As section 33E of the Act will not commence for two years, the existing section 33D in the Home Building Act will operate in relation to mechanical services and mechanical gas work. Clause 33D provides that a supervisor or tradesperson certificate must not be issued unless the secretary is satisfied that the applicant has the necessary qualifications and pass the examinations or practical tests as the secretary determines necessary as well as the applicant having the experience that the secretary considers would enable the applicant to do or supervise the work in question. This section allows the work in the area of mechanical services and medical gas to continue prior to the new requirements commencing, but with the safety nets in place that I've articulated. In addition, the bill provides for the commencement of the proposed act on the day that is six months after the date of assent. This essentially allows time for the Secretary to, provi to provide certificates under section 33D to suitably qualified individuals before 15A comes into effect, which prohibits an individual from doing any mechanical services work, which includes medical gas, without the required certificate and licence. There are the penalties if there is a failure to comply with the requirements. The penalties, Mr. President, will start six months after the date of assent to ensure New South Wales only has individuals that are safely completing this high risk work as incorrect instalments can be fatal. Labor is amending the Home Building Act to make sure individuals carrying out mechanical services and medical gas are suitably qualified. Just as electricians and plumbers dealing with water and drainage are required to be right here, right now. As members, as members of this House, I believe it is our obligation to examine issues that are affecting the health and safety of our communities and do absolutely everything possible to protect people across this state. Legislating to protect the community from potentially deadly Legionella outbreaks is essential. When residents of our state are requiring hospital treatment, their families and loved ones should not have to be concerned that another catastrophic incident could occur. This legislation will make sure that only qualified and skilled people are undertaking high risk work with medical gases in hospitals. Opposing this bill, Mr. President, or failing to legislate to protect babies and other members of the public from being exposed to poisonous gas is inexcusable. I would like to make a special mention again of Benish and Danielle Khan, who are here to offer their support today. I have been extremely fortunate to have met the beautiful Khan family. When I met their lovely daughter Amelia, it broke my heart to see Amelia speechless and cogni cognitively impaired due to a human error which was totally and absolutely avoidable. Four years from the devastating cross-connection of gas delivery outlets at Bankstown Lidcombe Hospital, we still have a deregulated and unlicensed mechanical services and mechanical gas industry in operation today, Mr. President. I was particularly struck by the positive and determined demeanour of Amelia's loving and dedicated parents Benish and Danielle. Despite what they've been through and despite the lack of justice delivered to date, 
They are not in any way bitter or vengeful. They merely want to make sure that the lack of regulatory provisions is fixed so that a tragedy like this cannot happen again. Our hearts continue to go out to the Ganim family as well. Nothing can ever bring back John or change what happened to Amelia, but we can and we should act to prevent such tragedies from happening here again. The time to act, Mr. President, is right here and right now. Here, here. Here, here, here. All those in favour of the motion, say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. The ayes have it.